al aire. Raíz. Estimada audiencia, tengan todos ustedes muy buenos días, sean cordialmente bienvenidos a este encuentro y muchas gracias por acoger esta invitación de la Universidad de Tarapacá a través de la Dirección de Investigación y Postítulo en conjunto con la Dirección de Extensión y Vinculación con el Medio para participar de este webinar denominado Nuevos Diseños Avanzados de Cocinas Solares, una solución de cocina ecológica para las zonas urbanas, dictada por el destacado investigador de nuestra Casa de Estudios Superiores, el doctor Atul Zagade. Actúa como moderador el doctor Eduardo Galvez Soto, académico del Departamento de Ingeniería Mecánica. Vamos a dar lectura al, al currículum del doctor Zagade. El doctor Zagade es experto en energía solar, doctor en ingeniería energética, sistemas solares térmicos de la Central University of Jakarta. Maestría en Tecnología y Maestría en Tecnologías de la Energía, además licenciado en Ingeniería Mecánica en Chibaji University. Director del Laboratorio de Investigación de Energía Solar CERN en Pandapur, en India. Inventor de Open Sun Cooling Test para la evaluación de rendimiento de diferentes diseños de cocinas solares. Ha participado como experto en energía solar para los talleres de la Agencia Internacional de Energía sobre la hoja de ruta de la calefacción y refrigeración solar en Kassel, Alemania, en Beijing, China y en Sydney, Australia. Miembro del Comité de Programa Internacional, ha publicado en prestigiosas revistas eh, de investigación internacionales, tales como El Xavier, en Taylor y Francis, en Springer, y conferencias de renombre como el Congreso Solar World, el revisor de prestigiosas revistas internacionales sobre energía. Miembro de más de 20 sociedades eh, y asociaciones internacionales, ha actuado como guía, supervisor de proyectos, disertaciones en maestría en energías y maestría en tecnologías. Un amplio currículum de nuestro invitado, el doctor Atul Zagade. Señoras y señores que están hoy acompañándonos a través de esta conferencia virtual, eh, me es grato dejar en, este, en primer lugar uh, con ustedes al doctor Eduardo Galvez Soto, quien nos introducirá en este tema que hoy nos eh, convoca. Eduardo, bienvenido. Muchas gracias, Ricardo Castillo. Eh, bien, uh, yo diría que primero saludar al doctor Atul Zacate uh, y, a todos, y a todas las personas que están participando en esta conferencia. Uh, como decía Ricardo, mi nombre es Eduardo Galvez y tengo el honor de moderar esta actividad. Tendremos también importante eh, la colaboración del profesor Ricardo Reyes, quien estará a cargo de la traducción de la conferencia. El doctor Atul con la, eh, es nuestro colega, es trabaja con nosotros, trabaja como investigador asociado para el Departamento de Ingeniería Mecánica de la Universidad de Tarapacá. Es un placer contar con su participación en esta oportunidad y referirse al tema de nuestro gran interés, como son las cocinas solares. El Departamento de, de Ingeniería Mecánica, eh, en este departamento hemos tenido una amplia trayectoria en este tema, y hemos desarrollado diferentes tipos de cocinas solares aplicadas principalmente a las zonas rurales del norte de Chile. Eh, claro, hay un trabajo importante de mucho tiempo, y hemos desarrollado diseños, eh, construcción, eh, pruebas de funcionamiento eh, en diferentes tipos, tanto hornos, cocinas abiertas, concentradoras, ¿cierto? Lo que ha permitido también, en la, eh, esto es la formación de estudiantes, y también en el desarrollo de algunas iniciativas de investigación. Pero yo quería hacer un dato importante también para nuestro colega, que hemos establecido por lo menos una disponibilidad energética del orden de 4 a 5 horas, que es el tiempo necesario para realizar obviamente la preparación de alimentos. Un dato relevante porque eso nos permite dimensionar el uso, ¿no? Bueno, el doctor Atul nos presentará hoy día, en esta oportunidad, ¿cierto?, los avances más relevantes en el diseño de las uh, solar cookers, las cocinas solares, ¿verdad? Y, y esperemos que, obviamente, 
tengamos esta tensión importante porque nos trae novedades importantes tanto en el uso de materiales, ¿cierto? O en diseño de especiales. Eh, importante que al final de la presentación se atenderán las consultas, ¿eh? Vía chat, vía vivo, vamos a tratar de, de que recibir eh, la mayoría de las consultas y poder responder, responderla de manera eficiente. Eh, saludar en, también, aparte de nuestro invitado, a nuestro director de investigación y posgrado y transferencia tecnológica, Rodrigo Ferrer, también a nuestro decano de la Facultad de Ingeniería, Alejandro, y, y eso. Bueno, muchas gracias, doctora Tull, y, y lo invito uh, a que inicie su presentación. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, and uh, thank you for all the professors and uh, Professor Lorena, uh, Professor uh, Ferrer, and all the professors from the University of Tarapaka to give opportunity to present my presentation. <clears throat> And uh, I will start my presentation uh, within a few seconds. Thank you. Oh, th thank you for a nice introduction and uh, uh, <clears throat> also thank, thank you for presenting short view of solar cooking and opportunities in <clears throat> a Chilean context. So the today's topic, I'm going to talk on uh, solar thermal cooking, recent advanced designs on solar cooking. Uh, in urban areas, the urban that is the word uh, that developed by my uh, teacher. Then challenges in solar cooking and their performance evaluation. Along with this, I will talk on uh, solar thermal opportunities in solar cooking. So today's presentation, I will going to talk on current status of energy consumption in market in Chilean context then different designs of solar cookers, types of solar cookers, then challenges in solar cooking, different types of test loads and thermal storage materials used in the solar cookers, then their thermal, thermal performance analysis of the solar cookers with the thermal storage, limitations of thermal storage materials, and final remarks. So I will start with this uh, short presentation, short slide uh, re related to carbon dioxide concentration at uh, world level, we can say. <clears throat> so you, from the slide, you can see from 1960 to 2000, 2020, how the carbon dioxide concentration goes on increasing all over the world. <clears throat> so it, in 1960, it is in, uh, 310 ppm in the atmosphere, and to, in 2020, it is uh, raised by 100, almost 100, and it is now 420 ppm all over the world. And we know, and it affects, it affects the, uh, it, it, it leads to, I can say, uh, <clears throat> greenhouse effect, and this is the slide that shows how the ice uh, is melting all over the world in the glaciers itself. You can see from 1960 as carbon carbon dioxide present uh, carbon dioxide ppm goes on increasing in the atmosphere. Ice melting in the glaciers started at faster rate, and it causes the greenhouse effect. So let us come to uh, primary energy consumption of fossil fuels in Chilean context. This is, this is the data taken by Statistical Review of World Energy. And uh, you can see uh, the fossil fuel, the share of prim uh, primary energy from fossil fuels in the Chilean context is around 80%. It is around 80%. 
and this is this this slide uh, depicts greenhouse gas emission by sectors in chile in 2016 so you can see at the first it comes electricity and heat it comes electricity and heat and this is the data taken again from the <clears throat> uh, world world resources in transportation in manufacturing construction agriculture buildings waste to inner uh, waste then other fuel combustion industry and out of that out of these different sectors the greenhouse majorly comes from electricity and heat and this electricity and heat it may be in industries and it may be in the household sectors so this is the figure that shows uh, the uh, <clears throat> related to wood wood consumption in uh, different sectors of chile uh, and you can see in the particularly in the uh, south chile uh, there is a lot of use of wood in the cooking energy so 70% of chilean energy comes from imported fossil fuels you can see here in uh, crude oil it is almost it uh, on the axis the uh, graph shows energies in tera calories Now, crude oil is the most popular fuel i can say in chile uh, till date and highest energy comes from the crude oil then biomass well, second one is the biomass third one is the coal then diesel natural gas and you can see the energy of solar uh, uh, so solar energy is the least count even all the all the renewables have very small uh, <clears throat> participation in the uh, supplying energy in the chilean context so did we need uh, this type of uh, electricity and heat in the our cooking sector so let us see uh, what is your emission factor the energy factor it comes it comes from stochastic combustion of methane hydrocarbon represented in the following chemical equation so this slide shows you Uh, after burning one kilogram of uh, LPG, we can have a two point seventy four kilogram of CO two. Then thermal performance of gas burning water heaters is low, and that of gas cookers is even low. so this is a simple equation that shows you how uh, the efficiency of gas is calculated roughly and uh, the table below the this figure represents uh, the re efficiency of gas then high gas with high efficiency burners then electricity efficiency with conventional efficiency and high high efficiency so you can see if we are using lpg gas is as a burner for water heating as well as cooking we can achieve highest efficiency around 62% and with electric electricity it comes to be 94% but electricity is again generated with fossil fuels like coal and biomass and other other uh, types of fossil fuels so it leads to increase the carbon dioxide present, carbon dioxide in greenhouse effect in the chilean context so this is the simple diagram of flat plate collector i can say uh, in the solar uh, sector uh, flat plate water heater and it converts around 60% of solar radiation into the heat so it is really even we can have a simple design of solar water heater or cooker we can save a partially 
we can save a, a potential uh, a high quantity of uh, fossil fuels in uh, domestic sector. Can we replace LPG with solar cooker in Chilean context? What is your opinion? Is it correct to correct or mistake to use gas in domestic cooking, or alternatively, can we use can we cook without burning a gas? That is my question, and the answer is the answer is yes. We have much more sustainable options to meet cooking needs and food heating needs by harnessing solar energy. So let, uh, after discussing this uh, fossil fuel scenario in uh, not only in Chilean context, all over the world situation is almost same. Propagation of renewable energy is still lower side and uh, we have to push our uh, efforts in that direction. One of them is cooking energy in domestic sector as well as commercial sector. So let us discuss with factors affecting acceptability and propagation of solar cookers. Firstly, ease of availability of conventional cooking devices and fuels. That is the biggest hurdle in propagation of solar cookers. We are habitual with use of conventional cooking devices like LPG burners, kerosene stoves, biomass cook stoves, then wood stoves. And that because of that, uh, the propagation of solar cookers is uh, going to affect. Then second one is purely economic cost. Uh, purely economic factors. First is capital cost and second one is operational cost. One para eh, producir calor. Third one, that is different food preferences. All over the world, you can see uh, there are different types of foods being prepared. And uh, it is... Uh, uh, believed that a solar cooker cannot prepare different types of food. What happened? So uh, to prepare a different, a different type of food, uh, we need a holistic design of solar cooker that can cook different, different uh, food items. And because of uh, unavailability of holistic design, the propagation and acceptability of solar cookers is still hampered. Then diverse designs and methodologies, methodology options for performance evaluation. That is another holder. Different designs of solar cookers are being analyzed using uh, different performance standards. And on the basis of that, uh, one can not choose a perfect design for their, uh, as per their use, uh, necessity and use. Then third, uh, next issue is operational simplicity and technical capability of the solar cookers. So solar cookers uh, may have some operational uh, issues. The operational simplicity may not be there and they may, they need tracking. They need some frequent uh, attention and technical capabilities in terms of supplying heat at adequate temperature at, at, at adequate time, in adequate time. That is the technical issues uh, that leads to, uh, uh, I can say, uh, hamper uh, the, the uh, cooking time uh, or technical issues in the solar cookers. Then non-availability of single modified and advanced hybrid design of solar cookers to tune in with diverse cooking methodologies y avanzados de cocinas solares en función de las distintas metodologías de cocción y preferencias alimentarias. Then let us come to a classification of solar cookers. Basically, there are three uh, dominant features. First one. Uh, that is box type solar cooker. Second one is solar concentrating type of solar uh, cookers. Then third one, indirect designs or advanced designs. And on the basis of heat transfer, we can say a conductive type 
solar cookers, then radiative type solar cookers, then convective type solar cookers, and mixed mode uh, heat transfer solar cookers. These are the two basic uh, uh, classifications that I uh, follow. Then let us come to uh, different designs of solar cookers. First one, you can see a uh, solar panel cookers. It is very inexpensive and can be built by any person at their or own home with simple designs. And it costs around 200 to 500 Indian rupees. That means uh, 2,000 to 5,000 trillion pesos. And it takes time around uh, one hour to four hours uh, for cooking and limited quantity of cook. Uh, food can be cooked with this uh, this type of solar cooker and they have a short life the second one uh, uh, famous design solar box cookers a moderate cost around uh, uh, to 200 5000 to 4000 rupees that is uh, 25000 to 40000 chilean pesos cooking time requires around 1 hour to 3 hours and it is time tested methodology technology and it has some issues like uh, breaking of steels, breakage of glass mirrors, and all these. Then second, third one, that is uh, parabolic cookers. Uh, they are affordable designs and that uh, they can cook very fast within uh, 30 minutes and for uh, 30 to 45 minutes, we can have a boiling type of food. In the later presentation, we are going to see some uh, videos related to cooking in the with the parabolic dish and so i will uh, escape this to next slide so this these are the most famous cookers all over the world and different designs in solar concentrating mode nowadays coming so that we can have a fast cooking with uh, uh, high efficiency they are these are offered affordable designs and uh, you can see uh, different designs available in short uh, diameter as well as large diameters these are the cookers uh, for two to four meters uh, four meters square and they can be used to cook food for for 30 to 50 people depending upon your location as well as your uh, need and third one that is the indirect type of solar cooker there is a solar collector and uh, the test fluid is heated or heat transfer fluid is heated and it is convected to another location and you can have this area in your kitchen and you can cook with uh, heat transfer mode the, with the fluid which stores the heat here in the cook zone and this type of cookers can be built on your uh, rooftop and the oil or hot uh, thermal fluid can be circulated to your kitchen. So let us focus on uh, recent designs of solar cookers and along with presenting the designs, I will uh, give some brief introduction to these designs and uh, issues with their performance evaluation. So first one, uh, that is the design. This is the hybrid cooker, I can say. Uh, it is equipped with, uh, it is a box type of solar cooker developed by Joshi and Jani in 2015. And you can see here, uh, it is a hybrid cooker with uh, electricity backup using solar energy. Uh, photovoltaic panels are attached to this cooker so that uh, they can supply electricity and heat the absorber plate as per uh, your requirement. Even uh, this cooker can be equipped with a battery, so can it? Uh, this type of cooker can cook in the evening also. They calculated the thermal efficiency for this type of cooker. I'm going to focus on uh, thermal performance parameters because we, we need to understand what is the issues with testing solar cookers. Then this is the design designed by Saxena and Agarwal in 2018. Here you can, it is again a box type of solar cooker and it is additional heat is supplied using a halogen lamp and a fan. It is a duct, a trapezoidal duct it is with foam insulation. Fan sucks the air, the halogen lamp heats the air in the duct and that hot air is supplied to the cooking cabinet. With this type of solar cooking arrangement, uh, as per the results, 
it we can cook the food boiling type of food within 50 to 60 minutes with box cookers as well but it is a hybrid cooker again this is multi application solar cooker uh, de developed by singen in 2018 it is used as a box cooker as well as dryer when we have to cook a food we can put cooking pots when we have to dry we can use drying so multi application solar cooker it is tested using figures of merit one and figures of merit one and dryer performance. So figure of merit one and figure of merit two, these are the two performance parameters used worldwide for testing box type of solar cookers. This is another design developed by Ian Edmonds in Australia. And you can see this is a, a concentrating type of solar cooker. And here we have a sun space. That means whatever the solar radiation falls on the reflector surface that get concentrated in the uh, backside of cooker. And we can have a uh, umbrella here and we can cook with a pan type arrangement. This is the pan type arrangement and uh, you can make a bread, you can make an Indian chapati and all type of food can be prepared using this type of cookers. They, uh, the, the performance is evaluated using cooking power. So until we can see three, four parameters are used for performance evaluation. First is thermal efficiency. Second one is figures of merit for box type of cookers, then cooking power for concentrating type of cookers, as well as efficiency for concentrating type of solar cookers. This is another design, a uh, high concentration solar cooker developed by Kokia. This, this, is, the, this is the Italian group and uh, they have 12 reflectors and a box type arrangement. There are 12 reflectors here. They concentrate the energy on the glass and the energy is propagated inside the cooking cabinet. And uh, the concentration ratio here is around 11. So they use Cooking up to th cooker up to thermal ratio, cooking power, and figure of merit. Three parameters for testing this type of solar cooker. This solar cooker can reach temperature in the range of 180 to 200. And they use peanut oil as a test load or a cooking load, I can say. This is the design developed by Khalup, and I was the part of development of this design. This is a box type solar cooker with uh, multi application like drying as well as desalination. Here we use figures of merit one, figures of merit two, cooking power and the core as a performance parameter. This is a dual chamber solar cooker. Uh, two cooking pots are placed in two different cabinets and we can have a boiling type of food within uh, 80 to 90 minutes. And this is the recent design that we developed this year. Uh, this is uh, an Egyptian group and uh, the uh, professors from University of Chile and me was involved here in this development of this design. This is a box type of solar cooker with a bottom reflector. Here is a bottom reflector that is in the parabolic shape. And we can say it is a double exposure solar cooker it can uh, focus the uh, solar radiation falls on the top area as well as it is concentrated from the bottom area. And we have a uh, dual heating here in the cooking chamber. And Most, this type of cooker can... Un sistema de temperatura dual. This type of solar, uh, this type of solar cooker uh, heat uh, boiling type of food within 60 to 70 minutes. This is the conical Fresnel lens solar cooker developed by Stravos. And uh, it is a Fresnel lens and you can see the so radiation get concentrated at the focal point. Now we are going to discuss regarding 
challenges in solar cookers. Main drawback related to solar cookers, the, they cannot be utilized during shortage of sunshine hours. Second one, the solar cookers can be able to perform all type of cooking. Can, uh, that is boiling type of food, then roasting, frying. These are all the type of food cannot be cooked with a single, uh, single cooker. That is another issue. Then it should be able to cook multiple meals, even load solar radiation during wider window of solar cooking time. So it is desired that the solar cooker, whatever the design of solar cooker, it should cook multiple meals in a given day, even with the solar radiation, lower, lower value of solar radiation. Then it should ensure the accomplishment of solar cooking activity within predetermined time. So if you need a cook, uh, food within 30, 40 minutes, it should cook within for 30, 40 minutes. That is the another design challenge that we are facing. Then cooking time must be comparable. Its cooking time must be comparable to the conventional cooking devices. So if one can compare LPG is cooking within 20 minutes, 30 minutes, then why not solar cooker? So people always believe in comparison of different devices of solar uh, different devices of uh, cooking, and based upon that they, they make the decision. So this is the design challenge for uh, solar cookers that should cook very fast within short time. Then solar cooking should be possible indoors. That means uh, no one want to go into uh, sun for longer time and cook there. Instead of that, they want solar cooking. Uh, some part of cooking should uh, sun's radiation should come into the kitchen, so can indoor cooking is possible. It should be possible to cook safely without burning accidents. Many times, burning accidents happens with the solar cookers, and so safety of the users that is another challenge. It should be economic, and it should be portable with high volumetric power density. These are the design challenges in solar cooker. And based upon this, we have to design a high quality or holistic design, which can accommodate all these factors. But still, as a researchers, we are failing in this. And uh, that is why the propagation of solar cookers to the domestic level is not good till date. Then why we need high temperature fluids and thermal storage in the solar cookers. First challenge, first is to reduce the cooking time and, and address the issues of fluctuating solar radiation. If we have a good thermal storage in the solar cooker itself, then it can reduce our uh, cooking time as well as it addresses the issue of fluctuating solar radiation. So we know so solar seasonal solar energy, seasonal energy, uh, have some fluctuations because of clouds and all, all other things and it hampers your cooking activity. So to reduce the burn accidents and user exposure to serious solar radiation, then to improve the performance, then to keep food items warm for till evening and explore possibilities of evening cooking with the thermal storage. Here it is important to note that uh, when we use water as a test load or water as a testing fluid for solar cookers, we cannot reach temperature beyond 100 degrees centigrade. So if we have indirect type of solar cookers, we can uh, reach temperatures in the range of 200 to 150. And for community cookers like parabolic dishes, they can reach uh, uh, temperature around 300, 400 degrees centigrade. Then how to test that cookers? So for that purpose, we need different fluids uh, that can be used as a test load, as well as uh, thermal storage for evening cooking. So these are the methods of thermal energy storage in solar cookers. First, uh, there are common techniques to store solar thermal energy, thermochemical storage, then sensible, uh, sensible heat and latent heat. 
these are the three basic modes that use as a thermal storage in the solar cookers. Thermochemical storage, uh, thermal impacts are uh, of irreversible chemical changes uh, is to be portrayed by high thermal uh, storage capacity and low controllability. So these are the advantages of thermochemical storage. They have high storage capacity and low controllability. The control needed is less. Then sensible heating, sensible heat storage uh, used during the temperature variation of heat storage media. When there is a fluctuation in temperature, then uh, we can have this type of storage. A relatively simple method of heat storage and easy to control. And the amount of energy stored is moderately low. This is the disadvantage of sensible heating. So they can store uh, heat for small period. Then the latent heat storage, uh, the concept of utilizing phase change materials. This is, this is the basic, uh, uh, we can say, materials nowadays are used of in uh, different designs of solar cookers. And now another application is coming, upcoming, uh, like, like, like uh, in under Augusta University, they use uh, some lithium uh, liquids in as a thermal storage. Then uh, nano PCMs, uh, incorporation of uh, nano particles and nano fluids as a phase change materials. These are the scenarios upcoming days, and they have small temperature variations, high storage capacity during phase change good controllability and piece, uh, it charges five to 13 times higher thermal energy uh, per unit mass than the sensible heat storage. As compared to the sensible heat storage, they have higher thermal storage capacity. Then what are the requirements related to thermal storage? Uh, PCM must have certain characteristics like physical, chemical, and economic properties to meet certain requirements. Physical properties, appropriate uh, phase transition temperature is required. So it is desired that phase transition temperature should be low so that they can melt high at uh, uh, faster speed and store energy for longer time. Fully, uh, fully irreversible irre solidification melting cycles are required then large enthalpy change, high thermal conductivity, space, large specific heat storage capacity, and negligible supercooling. So these are the advantages. Uh, these are the requirements of the phase change materials. Then chemical properties, it should have low pressure, low vapor pressure, then low volume pressure. It is desired that homogeneity with the other substances, then chemical stability is required. It should be non-flammable and non-toxic. These are the two most parameters, uh, I can say, in the chemical uh, properties. These are the two most challenging factors, non-flammability and non-toxicity, because it can hamper your food. Then economic properties, as we know, it should be cheap, recyclable, and it should be used for uh, widely available and for uh, it can be used for longer time. So classification of PCM is based upon uh, li liquid to gas, solid to gas, solid to solid, and solid to liquid. These are the four types uh, of phase change materials are generally used in solar cookers. The phase transition involves gas state, which is not suitable because of large volumes of their pressures needed to change the heat, whereas solid to solid PCM are characterized by relatively low phase transition and low latent heat. Thus, solid liquid PCMs are adequate for charging heat in thermal systems. Then how these solid to liquid PCMs are used in solar cookers? There are two types again, organic PCMs and inorganic PCMs. In organic PCMs, we have paraffins, then sugar alcohols like erythritol, xytol, and some fatty acids as a thermal storage materials. And in organic materials like salt hydrates and metallic hydrates, then eutectic PCMs, 
and uh, compare uh, com, it uh, com, uh, PCMs comprise of combination of AD rate of two different PCMs, as well as as I said earlier, uh, nowadays combination of different uh, nano fluids with PCM and nano PCMs, uh, part, uh, nano particle integrated PCM. That is the trend nowadays. So this is the figure uh, I can say. En el siguiente, la siguiente diapositiva, pueden ver. These are different materials used by different researchers all over the world. Por diferentes in, uh, investigadores alrededor purpose. del mundo, en cocinas solares. You can see uh, the, it shows melting point temperature and latent heat of fusion. And variety of PCMs are used. You can see peanut oil, then palm oil, coconut oil. Then sodium salt, again sodium salt, then paraffin, then stearic acid, then again paraffin wax, naphthalene, acet uh, acetamide, then oxalic uh, dihydrates, erythritol, acetanolide, benzic, uh, benzonic acid. These are the different materials used and you can see here uh, the melting temperature range as per requirement. It varies melting temperature from 3 degrees centigrade to 253 degrees centigrade. So these are materials that can be used as per your requirement. If there is a parabolic dish cookers or high temperatures cooker, you can integrate different materials. The challenge is how to integrate the solar uh, thermal storage effectively without hampering the performance of solar cookers. Different storage materials are available, but their capability of storing heat for longer time and uh, with uh, longer duration in the evening cooking is these are the still challenges even uh, the performance of solar cookers was not tested and with these pcms under fluctuating solar uh, fluctuating solar radiation conditions that means whether these par these parameters are able to, uh, this uh, heat storage materials are able to address the challenges when solar radiation is going and coming. So some cloudy periods are coming, then whether these uh, PCMs are able to store sufficient quantity of heat for completing the solar cooking process is a challenge. So these are three, uh, I'm, uh, uh, showing three cookers uh, re developed recently in last four or five years uh, related to thermal storage, solar cooker with thermal storage. The first one, they did the Tirwadi ETL to 2016. They use evacuated tube collector and uh, a heat transfer fluid and storage media. In the uh, Oil, the heat transfer fluid get heated, it uh, transferred to the uh, cooking chamber. There is a PCM storage and cooking pot there, here. And uh, the recirculation is done. Heat transfer fluid transfers heat, heat to PCM, that PCM get charges and stores the heat. And we can have cooking activity here. Uh, this PCM storage can be located at your cooking location in the inside kitchen and uh, anywhere you want. And the, then again, the cold oil is uh, recirculated to solar collector using a pump. Then Kumar ETL 2018. Uh, this is again evacuated to collector. You can see here. And they have hot water and cold water passing to the uh, PCM vessel. And PCM get charges and stores the heat. And third one, that is the high temperature cooker, that is parabolic dish, you can say, to access tracking arrangement is there. And this is the paper, uh, this is the research uh, proposed by Bhave and, it, Bhave and Thakre in 2018. They use uh, a rice as a cook, uh, rice, uh, a real, they test, they, they act, the uh, main, uh, Focus of this work is to design a storage, thermal storage for high temperature solar cooker like box uh, dish cooker. 
then with this we we have seen different designs then different thermal storage materials and challenges related to solar cooking now why we need alternative test fluids we have uh, coming to that scenario issues related to lower temperature of boiling point i discussed this then applicability of thermal performance parameters and corresponding test procedures determined at low temperature may not be appropriate for intermediate temperature solar cookers so whatever the parameters developed figure of merit 1 figure of merit 2 then cooking power these are the parameters developed for uh, low temperature solar cookers and their applicability at high temperature solar cookers it is questionable then lack of sufficient information regarding intermediate solar cookers such as highest achievable fluid temperature of the test load and rating of solar cookers highest achievable fluid temperature that is the temperature reached by any cooker on a given day if we are testing a solar cooker in a winter then highest achievable temperature may be low when we are testing solar cooker in a summer the temperature will be higher but how to predict there is no parameter to predict this type of temperature so that the design can be optimized then rating of solar cookers how to rate high temperature solar cookers with water that is a challenge then resolution and stability at higher temperatures of existing tpps then inter and intra cooker design comparison so inter and intra cooker design comparison that is uh, a box type one type of box cooker with another type of box cooker and that is the inter cooker design comparison and intra cooker box cooker with dish cooker or another design so this type of design uh comparison or performance comparison may not be possible with uh, existing thermal performance parameters and it leads to affect the performance improvement techniques developed and uh, appropriate uh, i can say appropriate rating of solar cookers at low as well as high temperatures again if we have a hybrid design like uh, i shown here boxed uh, evacuated tube collector connected to thermal storage with pcm again how to test that cooker that is again another challenge so intermediate temperature solar cookers need to be developed for uh, reducing our uh, household cooking energies and uh, to have a realistic impact on the climate change in terms of uh saving cooking energy with fossil fuels <clears throat> so we propose uh, we have different type of test loads used in the solar cookers until first water is a standard test load we know then some type of oils peanut oil coconut oil olive oil sunflower oil and engine oil but all types of oils have lower temperature around 200 uh, 240 uh, degree centigrade and uh, it hampers it hampers <clears throat> your uh, performance at higher temperatures because of that again the properties of peanut oil and coconut oil may not be same at the all world locations so the peanut oil manufactured in india peanut oil manufactured in chile may have different properties so we have to select a test fluid that is uh, widely available and it don't have uh, much variation in their properties for that purpose we propose glycols and glycerol out of this glycol glycols have some toxicity blood uh, glycerol that means glycerin that is the uh, we can we have seen uh, several times this is best uh, test fluid till date uh, to use as a test load in the solar cookers and uh, subsequent performance rating of solar cookers at high temperatures because glycerin is having boiling point 290 degree centigrade so it is appropriate for box type of solar cookers as well as parabolic dish type of solar cookers 
So these are the different type of parameters I have discussed already. Uh, figures of merit for box cooker, then cooking power, efficiency. And this is the parameter that we have developed, the cooker up to thermal ratio. This is my contribution or my group's contribution to the solar cooking sector. Cooker up to thermal ratio, this is uh, why, why we need generalized parameter, generalized stress parameter. Different thermal performance parameter and stress procedures are available for solar cookers as we I, I, we seen in the presentation itself. Then enable these parameters and procedures to assist thermal performance, comparison of inter and intra cooker design variations and hybridizations to facilitate the users in the selection of technology or design of solar cookers to provide boost in the propagation of solar cooking technology. So if you have a unique parameter for testing different designs of solar cooker, then based upon that, you can choose a best design and best cooker as per your need and your requirements. In your, at your location, even you can design your own cooker with uh, more easily or more re realistically. So this is the definition of uh, core. It is very simple definition. Uh, optical, product of optical efficiency into concentration ratio divided by heat loss factor. So here you can, in the definition itself, you can see uh, the concentration ratio that is the parameter comes into the picture and concentration ratio represents different types of collectors. So for this type of solar collectors, the concentration ratio is high. For box type of solar cookers, it is near to unity. And for hybrid designs, that may be in between box cooker and dish cooker. So core is able to characterize all types of solar cooker based upon design of solar cookers. And these are the different parameters, core dependent parameters that are able to predict a holistic design of solar cooker. That is the highest achievable fluid temperature, how, uh, what temperature solar cooker can reach on a given day. Then reference cooking time. Uh, this represents the time required for cooking uh, the food, any type of food that may be a boiling type of food or frying type of food or baking type of food depending upon the design. And third one, the heat retention time, that is the most, uh, those most uh, uh, precise parameter I can say nowadays uh, that we are facing the challenges of thermal storage and all these things. So it is required that solar cooker should have appropriate heat retention time so that we can integrate uh, optimal quantity of thermal, uh, optimal quantity of thermal storage without hampering its performance. So based upon heat retention time, one can design, reverse design uh, their own solar cooker. So these are the contributions from my side uh, to the solar cookers. I'm going to, I'm coming to the end of uh, presentation here. Enabling rating of intermediate temperature solar cookers that was the rating parameter using high temperature cook loads. Then second one, ensuring completion of solar cooking activity under uh, unexpected reduction in solar irradiance. And then third one, uh, we have developed a method for determining thermal concentra uh, concentration ratio for solar box cookers using thermal test. Till date, geometric concentration ratio is being used and uh, realistic for the me uh, measurement of realistic uh, concentration ratio, we have developed a thermal methods. Then uh, this is another design, a modified cooking pot was re uh, represented. This is another design uh, that I shown a, a solar cooker with dome shape cover. And this is the recent one uh, with the bottom reflector. So possibilities of solar cooking in domestic cooking sector. This is, these are the my experiences at my home. You can see a two types of parabolic dishes. This is SK14 
and this is uh, Prince 15. And we use this uh, solar cookers for different applications. We start from seven o'clock in the morning by heating of milk. Then we can roast uh, bread, Indian chapati. Then we can have cookies and uh, we can have cake, different type of cake and frying type of food. You can see this uh, short video. The lady is preparing a frying type of food. And this is the cake uh, that I prepared for uh, birthday of my friend in Portugal. I'm going to show this. These are the real uh, cooking practices in the domestic sector. And uh, we are uh, personally, I'm using solar cookers to, since 2007. So these are the another designs I can see. Uh, you can see this is a, a parabolic cooker, a short, a small cooker with evacuated tube and different types of food prepared at domestic scale. So thank you for giving an opportunity to speak in this seminar and uh, I'm open to answer any questions from audiences and respected professors. Thank you. Ok. ¿Se escucha bien? Ya, yeah, ok. Gracias. Muchas gracias por la presentación, doctor eh, Tull. ¿Me escucha bien, doctor? ¿Puedes you hear me? Thank please? you. Okay. Yeah, I'm hearing you. Ok. Bien. Uh, uh, a nuestro público, a los que están presenciando esta actividad, esta conferencia. Este, ¿Estamos bien en la, en la imagen, no? ¿Se ve? ¿Me ayudan? En definitiva, bueno, yo quisiera decir que hemos escuchado y presenciado una conferencia de, de muy alto nivel, diría yo. ¿eh? Muy alto nivel de contenido, de experiencias, de investigación, con detalles eh, muy importantes, entonces, para el diseño de las cocinas solares. ¿no? Eh, felicitaciones, doctor, también, pero en definitiva um, creo que va desde la importancia, fíjense, del uso de las energías limpias, ¿cierto? Obviamente de la... Se, se ve y se escucha bien, Eduardo. Ok, gracias, gracias. De, ya, hablaba entonces de la importancia de las energías limpias, es decir, cómo en estos tiempos tenemos que ir cambiando el uso de energías fósiles, ¿no? De fuentes fósiles, ¿no? O de combustible fósil. <ríe> y, y bueno, pasando por diferentes tipos de diseño, eh, materiales, formas de cocinas solares distintas, ¿no? El uso de fluidos y materiales para el almacenamiento de energía. Claro, eh, funcionamos de vida, ¿ok? Pero lo importante ahora es cómo almacenamos energía de tal manera que poder eh, usar la cocina solar, no solamente en el día, sino que nos dé más tiempo de uso, ¿no? Esa capacidad energética que yo mencioné al principio para preparación de alimentos. Pero también habla de sus limitaciones en ese sentido. Bueno, y termina con una gran demostración de sus propias experiencias domésticas, ¿no? Hay que decir que también es un buen chef, el doctor Atul Sagar. ¿eh? Así que ha cocinado su, su torta, su eh, frita, fritanga, y que miraba yo. Eh, eh, bueno, eh, felicitaciones a, a, a nuestro invitado. Y ahora yo voy a dejar una ronda de preguntas 
eh, que puede hacer el público, lo puede hacer a través del chat, lo puede hacer a, a través de vivo, creo, entiendo, y vamos a tratar de eh, contestarla de la mejor manera, eh, entendiendo que puede ser en español o en inglés, y tenemos nuestro amigo aquí, Ricardo Reyes, que nos va a colaborar si hay algún eh, problema de comunicación. Dejo abierto entonces eh, una ronda de preguntas. <risa> ok. Thank you. Bueno, si hay alguna pregunta, yo voy a atrever a hacer alguna primera. Eh, Doctor Atul. Um, uh, what do you think about uh, vacuum tube solar cooker? Yeah, very nice. Very nice. I'm uh, currently I'm working on that. Uh, the experiments are going uh, are uh, test I tested one cooker in summer Indian summer uh, peak summer I can say uh, last two three months now the rains are started and the winter performance we are going to test after October October to December in India uh -huh. okay so this is very very uh, very very nice design and uh, we can have uh -huh. uh, good opportunities with that type of cooker. I will say fast the cooking in the, in this is a solar cooking. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, ¿Hay alguna otra pregunta que quisiera hacer el público? ¿Estamos abiertos a las consultas? Um, ¿Decano? <ríe> si tiene alguna consulta. ¿Aquí hay alguna parece? Uh, thank you very much for seeing uh, Aquí hay una pregunta en el chat, doctor Atul. There is a, a question in the chat, please. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to make some adaptions in small places? That is, that is, uh, that uh, you, you, that you rightly indicated uh, that uh, small cookers, small designs like uh, evacuated tube co solar cookers and uh, small designs like uh, Uh, dish antenna, uh, our, we have a direct uh, D2H, D2H, uh, a TV antenna dish, small cookers that can be uh, integrated with uh, buildings, but we have to design the dish in that way. So it can be fit in the balconies and uh, your windows. This is, but uh, th there is a challenge so that uh, because it should uh, attain the sun Uh, when whenever sun is available and uh, some tracking mechanisms need to be developed for that type of focus. Small space designs are always all, all the time possible. These are the design challenges that we are facing. También, bueno, hay unos agradecimientos. Um, Edgar Estupiñal, uh, this uh, for presentation, thanks for pre presentation, this uh, interesting topic related to some of the state of art of solar cooking, the advanced challenge and opportunity, uh, from Edgar Estupiñal. Yeah? Um, I, I, there is an, another, uh, and, uh, and there is another question, The public, hay otra pregunta de los participantes si quieren revisar lo pueden hacer en español. Sí. O en inglés. Eduardo la dejé en el chat. Sí. Una pregunta. Okay. Hay una pregunta de perdón de Alejandro. Gracias. Dice yeah. si es posible adaptar las cocinas a las casas considerando almacenamiento. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we are adopt, We are. It, it, it is very very easy to adapt solar cookers in our households. Because uh, my, as my, I'm using uh, parabolic dishes and box cookers since 2007, 2007, almost 13, 14 years. And uh, in my house, we need only two LPGs in the rain, rainy season. Because in India, the rainy season is longer. It starts from uh, second week of June and lasts up to uh, last week of this uh, September or first week of October sometime. And uh, for this four months oh, wow. we need one cylinder one lpg and uh, another lpg uh, for all over the year uh, or another more uh, two or three lpg cylinders of 14 kg in the year only 
So all the time it is possible to use uh, uh, different designs of solar cooker as per your need in your houses, as well as even you can use it for barbecues. In, in because I know this is more popular in Chilean context and uh, American context, barbecues also prepared with uh, solar cookers. <laughs> even you can meet you can meet uh, prepare a meat uh, within uh, you can meet. Uh, you can cook a meat within uh, one hour and uh, 15 minutes. We can say 70, 60 to 75 minutes. Super bien. Muchas gracias. Uh, tenemos una uh, por ahí. Um, el uso... Lorena Cornejo está en el chat. Uh, yeah. This uh, he was the official in the social center of the poorest population could be advanced. What work should be done to transfer knowledge? Yeah, firstly, the, the, this is the challenge. This is the biggest challenge that we are facing. Uh, 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 yeah, apart from technical challenges in solar cooker, awareness, creation of the awareness amongst the community and building the confidence of the people in solar cooking technology, that is the biggest challenge. And as a researchers, we have to uh, uh, face this challenge and propagate solar cooking technology to grassroots level, build their confidence with uh, uh, low cost designs and uh, with some uh, community applications. Super. Uh, si hay alguna otra, aquí hay otra pregunta, no, está lo mismo, es la de Lorena Cornejo. Um, ¿Hay más preguntas del público? There is another question. I think, I think no. no. Ok, entonces, uh, si me permiten, vamos a, a cerrar eh, la presentación. Le vamos a agradecer uh, muy sinceramente con... Uh, un honor, uh, doctor uh, Atul, que haya podido presentar esta experiencia, el desarrollo de la cocina. Eh, nosotros hemos trabajado, pero uh, ve usted que tiene una gran cantidad de información técnica, desarrollo e investigación. Así que le agradezco enormemente y bueno, felicitar a todo el mundo que está organizando esta actividad a la Dirección de Investigación y Postgrado y Transferencia Tecnológica, la Facultad de Ingeniería, ¿cierto? el Departamento de Ingeniería Mecánica, y a todos los que han hecho posible esta transmisión. Uh, espero que podamos contar con ustedes prontamente en, en Arica, en el Departamento de Ingeniería Mecánica. ¿eh? Un, un abrazo y saludos para todas las personas que han podido presenciar, presenciar esta actividad. Thank you very much, Dr. Atul. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you for opportunity. And I hope uh, you like uh, the presentation. And uh, I'm happy to contribute to Arika. I am already working with you as associate researchers. And uh, I hope to contribute some more com concretely with Arika. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, estimado. Entonces, estamos eh, listos. Muchas gracias a todos por su presencia. Thank you.